Welcome back, CSE 121, to part two of our function review. In this one, we're going to take a look at flow of execution, line by line execution of a function and how it works. And this example contains two functions. So there's a power function, POW, and it's putting something to a power, and there's a square function. So it, it's kind of doing a function inside of a function. If you see, the, the square function is using the power inside there and just changing that to 2. So there's a, a general power function, and then there's one that's more specific that's using 2. So it, it's kind of changing the way it works inside here. So if you notice that it says n equals 5, and then it's going to square 5. And then that n is going to be part, where does the n go? If you put the n in there, it's square, squaring 5. So that means it's going to go to line 5, and it's going to square 5. And then it's going to say a equals 5 to the second power, and it's going to have to run back to the power 1. So I'm actually going to go to the next slide here just so we could follow the numbers, because it has all these numbers here to follow. So if you just look what happens here, it's going to start at line 1, and it's going to look and say, oh, there's a function definition called pow. And it's going to be looking for two numbers, uh, b and p. And then it's going to move on. It's not going to do anything. It's going to jump down, and, and it finds the next function definition. And it's going to say, oh, there's a, there's a function definition called square, and it's looking for one value. And then it's going to jump down to 9. It's not going to run anything in the function yet, because it, it didn't get a function call yet. Then it's going to run down to line 9 and say, oh, n equals 5. And it's going to put n in with the function call of square. That's on line 10. And it's going to hold it as result. So it's going to basically, now's when the function's getting called. So now things are starting to happen. It's going to square n. OK, so it's using 5. It's squaring 5. So we got to run back to line 5, because that's where the function definition is. So it's going to go to line 5 and say, OK, let's square 5. And it's going to say a equals pow. And then it's going to use 5 in place of the x. And now it doesn't do anything yet, because that's another function. So then from there, it's going to have to go back to the pow function. That's why if, when it goes to 5 and it goes to 6, it jumps back to 1. You can see over here, after 6, it jumps back to 1. And then it goes through that function and says, oh, OK, now that I have two values, and it doesn't matter what their names are. You don't have to use you know, b and p. It's basically using 5 and 2 to represent b and p. So it's putting a 5 and 2 in there. So it's saying y equals 5 to the second power meaning it's going to square 5. So that's what it's using from the POW function. So it's going to square 5 and return 25. So y is going to be held as 25. And then it's going to go back. Well, it's going to go back to 6 because there's an a there that's holding that. So now that the function's finished, a is going to hold whatever that value is. So in line 6, it's holding that. So a is holding whatever the function result is, which was 25, because Basically, a equals y, in a sense, because y came down is what the function fruit was. So a equals the function fruit, which is 25. And then we're going to return 25 in line 7. And then we're going to go back to line 10 and say, OK, now we have this thing figured out. Uh, our, the result of all this is going to be the square with the power function inside is going to be 25. And then let's print it out at line 11. So it goes through this whole series of steps here because there's a function inside of a function. And I know it's a little confusing, but it's good to kind of follow something kind of short like this, at least to see what happens with a function, to follow its flow. Because as functions get a little more complicated, you're going to want to know what happens and also to troubleshoot when something goes wrong. Like, where is it having a problem? So, so this is a little complicated that it's getting sent through one function inside of another function, but it's not that hard to follow. So, so keep this in mind when you look at functions more in the future.